Hey, how you doing, Hillary? I'm great. I was listening to everything you were saying. Hi, everybody. Hi. Peace and blessings. Yes. So you could hear my, my preamble waiting for you? Yeah, about being grateful for everything and what are you doing today to, you know, show that appreciation. And, uh, you know, it's I was listening to everything. I was typing, I can't get on. And wonderful oh, oh, people oh. were uh, were jo joining in going, Rev, Rev, she's trying. She's trying. So thanks, everybody. <laughs> We well, got each other's listen, backs. I, I was I wasn't worried at all. I was just talking until until technology kicked in. But uh, it, it's it's good it's good to be with you. I'm sure everybody that's tuning in knows who you are. But just in case they don't, I also say, you know, we with we with Hillary Swank. You know, two time Oscar winner, million dollar baby, boys don't cry. But even beyond uh, beyond that, uh, what I've always appreciated about you, Hillary is that, you know, we used to talk about this years ago, some of the projects that you chose were not necessarily big blockbuster projects. I mean, they were projects of your heart, projects that would make a difference in the world, projects that would shine the light on, 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 on things that you were really concerned about. And yeah. so I've always, I've always respected that about you. So, so beyond uh, this, this mega movie star, which is beautiful and wonderful, uh, really, an uh, really a, 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 you know, a deep nod to your talent, uh, Thank you. Just a good all-around human being. <laughs> Thank you. you know, Thank you, Michael. I um, yeah. you know, first of all, I just want to to share with everybody that I have been going to Agape and a member of Agape since I was 17 years old. I'm 45 now, and so I've been um, following you and your teachings and your light for over half my life. And it has been such an important, first of all, I mean, I just went down to California and I'd only been in California a couple of years and I was so, um, you know, just young and I, I, I was trying to find my way in the business and trying to understand how to navigate it. And I had a wonderful mom who was supporting me, um, but having your teachings at such a young and, um, influential part of my life was so important and um teaching me the right path um in order to you know be in in the in the right zone but but meaning like ha learning how to take care of myself in a way that i was hanging with the right people but also right. the right zone with with the universe and right. finding and 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 learning how to shine my light in the way that you teach it um in order to try and um just do the best i could to navigate that world in 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 which to tell stories so i i i thank you for that and it was such a gift um shortly yeah, after are. that I, 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 like you said, um, I just started looking for stories about people um, who had feelings like I had inside. Now, what's beautiful about these stories is there a lot of them are the stories about the outsider, right? Um, people trying to, you know, fit in in societal norms and finding out that they might not be able to and so then blazing their own trail. And right. that was something that I could really relate to and understand. And it taught me those people, and a lot of them were true stories, taught me the importance of perseverance and the importance of trusting in something bigger than societal norms and the such. Yeah. So but, but, but between you and those stories that I was so blessed to be a part of telling, um, it just helped create who I am today and and you and those characters will always remain in my heart yeah I, I remember one time I was flying somewhere and uh, a person came with me and started talking to me seemed familiar but I didn't know who the person was some, some little guy and all of a sudden it was you in disguise you were dressed <laughs> I think you were I think you were in character for boys don't cry or something mm -hmm. and you were dressed up as a little boy or something and you were just talking to me. <laughs> and finally said, it's me, it's Hillary. And, and you would go out, like one time you dressed up as an old lady somewhere or something, but you would go yep. out and get in character, walk around the street and, and, and uh, carry and make the character really come alive within you. 
uh, in real life. And I'll always remember that. Who is this person talking to me on the plane? I don't well, know. <laughs> that's right. And I remember that because one of the things I needed to do was learn how I knew that the actors on set were going to, you know, say their lines and pretend that I was Brandon, Tina. And, um, but with, I needed to know what made me really pass um, as a boy and what didn't. So I was going to the people that I knew. Um, and at that point I'd known you already, uh, like seven years. So, um, going up to you and talking to you, um, and saying, Oh, I'm Hillary's, uh, cousin James, um, <laughs> from, from Iowa. And, and I had this whole conversation with you and then you were just talking to me and we were having a great conversation. And then, yeah, I was like, Hillary, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've always appreciated your work and appreciated how you didn't get sucked into a lot of the Hollywood stuff. You, you, you remain true to yourself and that's a very difficult beast to navigate and you've used the principles in a very powerful way. Now, now, now we're in this, this lockdown quarantine situation. It's the first time in history where the whole world has basically gone into quarantine and first time that, that healthy people are being asked to stay inside. It's never happened before. Mm -hmm. And you know, what, what, um, you know, how is this affecting you? Or what, what are you learning about yourself during this time of lockdown? Any, any insights, any revelations? Yes. Um, one revelation or, or continued revelation I've had is the work that I've had to do within myself and for myself is, um, it's really easy to keep busy and to avoid, um, you know, what you need to attend, whatever that is for anybody. Right. Right. Um, and so my work kind of my whole life has been to just slow down and simply be, and that's outside of my meditation practice, which, you know, is really important to me, but that's 20 minutes. And when you think of 20 minutes in a 24 hour day, it's not that long. And then you can really easily fill the time in being busy. Right. Um, so it's, it's in the beginning, um, I was really um, overwhelmed with the weight of what was happening to people um, just as a whole. This is something that's affecting everyone. And even though we're isolated, you can feel that heaviness, especially in the beginning. And I was really overwhelmed by it and I was crying every day. Mm -hmm. And then I, and then I got into a place of trying to understand what this meant for, for not just me, but everyone on a bigger level. And I feel like this is a real big reset button. I feel like we've needed this for a long time. I feel like we're going through things in a hole that is so ginormous from what's happening to the earth, to what's happening in politics, to what's happening, um, with um, just oppression of certain people, um, right. racial issues, things right. that feel so overwhelming and feel like what can we do as a singular person to help and make things better. And then I got into the fact that, you know, in order to, and it just makes me even emotional now, um, because when you think about it, it can feel heavy. So I thought, well, if this is a major reset button for not just me, but for everyone, everyone is in this together, right? right. What are we doing um, to utilize this time? Because nothing lasts forever, right? Um, and, um, sorry, I'm just over here on the side of the road where I got signal because I was in the middle and someone's just driving up. So let me social distance and go around the corner. This, this, um, is, this is real life. <laughs> yeah, this is real life. This, this, real life. this so, is not like a take. This is not a take. This is real life. <laughs> that's right. Um, so I thought, well, if I'm here, um, you know, utilizing this time to reset, how is that going to work for me? And so it means um, reconnecting with why I'm here on a bigger level. Um, it means honoring that, that need to reset, that need to sit down and reflect and just simply be. And 
I'm so grateful that I was given a gift to be a storyteller because if I can use this time to find more stories that I want to tell that shine a light on humans and the underdogs and what connects us rather than connecting to the things that divide us Mm -hmm. and work on as a production company that I have as well, getting those stories ready to be made so that when we can get them made, um, we connect with the light of those stories. We connect with the human qualities of those stories, no matter what the race, um, gender or creed um, of those stories are telling. And that's my part. That's what I can do. And that's the gift I was given. And I'm so grateful for it. And so I want to, 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 to use this time to continue to find those stories, to also continue to be quiet um, yeah. and not avoid. Right. That seems to be kind of the theme of our time right now, this, this, this reset. Let's stop. Individuals, as you've been saying, individuals have been practiced, avoiding, uh, using the, the world of, of, of shopping and consumerisms and whatever to not really deal with themselves. I mean, we're talking about the fact that we can actually become growth-centric beings. We can actually think about what kind of people do we want to be this time next year, rather than what next thing I can get myself into, distract myself from myself. We can begin to ask, who do I want to be this time next year? And oftentimes, people go through a whole life and never ask that question. And they end up, you know, later on in life, not really fulfilling potential or giving gifts. So this, I think the word reset is good, you know, and I, and I invite people to really think about what it means to be growth centric, what it means to be about inviting the next stage of our, our unfoldment to occur. I've been asking people this question, you know, based on um, this situation we're in, this, this global reset. You know, what is it that you're going to leave behind when we're able to go out into the world again? And what is it that you're going to amplify and take with you? We know you're a great storyteller, so we know you're taking that with you and your giftedness. What are you going to leave behind and anything else that you might be taking with you or you want to take with you? Um, I'm going to, you know, every time I do slow down, when I have a moment to slow down, I always say, please let me hold on to this feeling and um, how good this is for me. Um, and yet quickly I um, get wrapped up into daily life and the busyness again. And so for me, it's imperative that I hold, hold on to um, not making a reset be something that is um, forced on me. Um, Meaning, you know, we have to do this right now. It's not a forced thing. This is a choice that I want to make for myself all the time. Um, it's gotten, it's putting people's priorities back in order. You know, I don't have children, but all my friends who have children say, I kept saying, you know, once I got to this finish line with this job, or once I made that mark, or once I hit that, you know, agenda thing, then I would uh, go and spend a week with my kid camping or something. And then that just became a year and then another year. And the next thing they know, their children are teenagers. We're not going to get this time back, right? In this way, right. in this form, in this life. And so I think that um, it's just shifted priorities and reminded me as well that we don't need to be forced into the reset button. Like every day, you know, wake up, like you always say, I wake up and I go through, I, I, the first thing I do when I wake up and the first thing I do when I go to sleep is I talk about, I say at least five things that I'm grateful for and I hold them so in my heart and I feel them great, like deeply. And I let that be carry me into my day and I let that bring me back to my center and then I help it. I, I let that be the thing that lets me go to sleep. It helps me go to sleep. And I hold that one. I'm Absolutely. sleeping too. Absolutely. Yes. So those, yes. those, um, you know, that's always been kind of my ritual even before this reset, but right. this reset is just, like I said, it's a reminder to keep our priorities in order. And what are those priorities? It's not shopping, right? It's not, um, it's, it's not, uh, 
I mean, yes, we, we have a purpose while we're here, right? We have our purpose right. and we have to work towards that purpose, but that's, that's not all encompassing. There's other things that, that we need to figure out for ourselves and make a choice every day to be present with. Is there, is there anything burgeoning within you that has come up during this time that you want to explore more about yourself that you want to, that you want to bring to the world or even not just to the world, but just want to just bring out from the well, you know, kind of going back to the beginning of our conversation, you know, you not only did you influence me when I was young, but you continue to influence me with your teachings. And I just followed you um, recently. I got an email from you um, that was, you know, you sent out to your email list about um, something you did on commune. And oh, right. And I, um, I am always just looking for ways to continue to educate myself in higher learning. And yeah. so I've followed, you know, I've read your books and I've followed all your teachings and, and, um, yet there's still so much to continue to grow as you, as you, you know, deepen your evolution of yourself. Right. And so right. I just recently, um, got onto commune because of you. And um, I really enjoyed that 10 day course very, very much. And then found some other wonderful people within that um, uh, database to, to it's follow. A great, it's, a great, it's a great family. It's a great yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. And I love that. And you were talking about that person um, who was going through the divorce, what you just started on this, this, this talk with, um, who needed the liver transplant and, and how you were going to, um, you know, how how that person didn't end up needing a transplant because right. of the prayer work and all of that. That was that one of your commune um, lessons for one yeah, of the it days. Was, right, it was a teaching. I told her um, she was very adamant that she wanted a, a liver. Uh, excuse me, a kidney transplant. And oh, I yeah, said, well, let's try to, let's, let's try to heal the ones you have. And she was again, she 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 couldn't accept it. So I yeah. said, well, while we're, while we're waiting for the transplant, let's see what we can do. And I had the class. I said, how many people um, gave praise that their kidneys are working today? No one raised their hand. I said, oh, every time you go to the restroom, give thanks your kidneys are working. We called it the PP prayer. <laughs> praying while peeing. Praying while peeing. <laughs> and anyway, we prayed for her. Her name was Donna. Prayed for Donna. And then Donna, I had her read these chapters of a book that dealt with physical healing so her mind would be available to the possibility of it. So between her mind being available and the class holding her in prayer, about a month later when she went back to the hospital, they had spontaneously healed. And that was over 10 years ago. And she's still peeing. <laughs> like a dad. <laughs> Pee peeing. <laughs> so praying yeah. while peeing. Yeah, I, I just I mean it's so it's, it's yeah, like it's the power, power of the science of mind. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt right. you. Science yeah, mind it's um, it's, no, no, no. It's okay. This is what it's all about. So, so you were talking about um, yeah. So you you just want to explore more learning because, as I like to say, whatever it is we think we know, it's infinitesimally small compared to what we don't know. And so, to be growth centric, exactly, is to be aware of that. The beginner's mind, being as a child being in wonder and awe about what we don't know so that every year we're a different, greater version of ourselves in some area of our life. And that's, that is to be in the nature of, uh, of life. life. Life oozes, you know. So now, do you, do you tune in on Sundays and dance with us? Every oh. Sunday that I can. Every, if I'm not in the air traveling somewhere or, you know, somewhere I don't have Wi-Fi, I'm always live streaming. And, you know, when I'm in Los Angeles, I'm always there. So, right, right. um, I just, uh, you know, I feel like it's like now more than ever being connected in that way. And, um, you're just on fire. You, um, you're watching you even in your kind of evolution over the last however many years it's been, um, 25 years is just been also so wonderful to witness and, um, and how you've just continued to deepen and grow in your evolution. You know, it's, a uh, as they say, we learn from people's actions, right? More than we do from their words. So I um, am blessed just having been a part of your life and your teachings for so long. And um, 
I'm, um, I always tune in. Mm, thank you so much for that. And I'm, I'm glad we're a part of this great, wonderful family. And you mentioned, I'm, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, but you, you mentioned earlier about the things that the COVID has revealed. You talked about race a little bit. And, you know, obviously we're thinking about Ahmed Aubrey, who, who was murdered by the, the, um, the white nationalist and how social media assisted in really getting these uh, two men arrested that had been sitting around for over a month. Nothing happened. And, and the, the kind of work we're doing, your storytelling, um, Agape's reach, is actually, you know, shift the narrative so that, you know, as you were saying, gender, race, color, creed, you know, we have to all see each other as, as an expression of the one source. And so I know a lot of your work deals with a lot of things, you know, a lot of your storytelling. And um, we have a lot of work to do. We do. And I will never, I will never run again without holding him in my heart. I, I run for him along with everyone else who's running. He can't run anymore in the way, in the physical form. Um, and we will for him. Yeah. Yeah. He went jogging and didn't get home to his mother. So we think about his mom. Uh, yes. I thought I, I brought, I put a picture up on the screen on mother's day. Uh, yes. Well, a, do you know he was born on mother's day? Oh, that's right. That was his birthday. It, yeah. It was going to be his 25th yeah. birthday. And so yeah. she, yeah. 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 Hillary's still my sensitive, sweet one. Very, yeah. The tears just flow. I, and I understand. I, I, I cry. But you know what? Everybody has to do what they can. I so appreciate you doing what you can. Hey, let me ask you this question. Have you downloaded my app yet? Yes, of course I have. The oh, day that okay. it, it was right. like, uh, what was it, two weeks ago that it went live? Yeah, two or three weeks ago, yeah. Oh, all right. Rev. I got, I, I'm all about you. I got your back. <laughs> I'm following you. I'm supporting you. You're supporting me. We're all supporting one another as a community. Everyone who tuned in, we can't thank you enough for joining us. And um, No, thank you. Know, you. We're, we're all one. We're all one. And we're united um, through this, this um, through Agape, through your app. Thank you for doing these live streams. Um, thank you for reminding us what's important. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're all going to be stronger from this. It's, it's nothing, like you say, the lessons don't come easily, right? Right. right. And every day we're um, given opportunities to grow. And we have to look at this as a huge opportunity to grow. The big growth opportunity for our entire world. We have to remain. Remember that we're sovereign beings. We can't let go of our civil liberties. Um, we have to stay strong and have to develop the capacity to develop our intuition through the work we're doing. So we're not just listening to external authority figures that, in many cases, don't have our best interests at heart. We have to be able to discern the difference between individuals who are holding us for the best and individuals who are just playing some kind of political game for whatever reason. And we want people to And the insight to know the difference. And the insight to know the difference. We want empowered people. That's what we want. We want people to be empowered. And hopefully and prayerfully, this time of lockdown, people are going to do exactly what you're talking about doing. Going in, introspecting, embracing a sense of gratitude about who we are, bringing our gifts out into the world and the muscles we develop during this time we don't allow them to atrophy when we're able to go back into society again hillary thank you for being with me i know you're you're on site you're doing something and you stop to have this conversation with us and so i appreciate your time i appreciate your consciousness i appreciate you and we, uh, for those listening we were talking about the app if you don't have the app you can just go to my website michaelbeckwith.com and and, and and get the app I'm going to be loading in a lot of things for inspiration and prayer and hope during this time and beyond. So just go ahead and sign up for it. Join us. You guys will not be disappointed. It, talk about get inspired and stay inspired. Because <laughs> life is good all the time. <laughs> any, any, any last words? Is that it? I just, I'm so grateful oh, for you. Oh, let me you. ask you this. How yeah, are you yeah. with your husband? 
How are you? We're husband? great. That's great, right. Great. Everybody, Reverend Michael married us two years ago this August. Um, August 18th, and actually today is our four-year anniversary of meeting each other on May 15th, wow. 2016. So um, we're actually, we were on the road um, to um, find a nice place to picnic in the middle of nowhere here. Great. Hey, yep. thank him. Thank him for allowing me to steal you away for a moment. <laughs> I will. He was so happy. He was like, oh, that's so great. Yeah, let's pull over. Let's do this. So, um, that's thank you, Rev. I love you so much to the community. You, I love you so much. So grateful to all of you. We're all in this together. We got each other's backs. Thank you. Absolutely. And I'll see you us uh, uh, Sunday live stream. See you Sunday. And I will talk to you soon. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Have a great day. If you want another awesome video in our black excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.